Developing an evaluation plan. A project evaluation measures the effectiveness and efficiency of a project and determines the achievement level of project objectives. Every agency and funder may have a specific way of evaluating projects. The following evaluation plan is specific to a and &E requirements. Let's look at evaluation planning, which is necessary to measure how well you accomplish the project goal and address the current condition statement. We will consider the appropriate means of measurement, data points, what tools are needed, what needs to be tracked, how often, and by whom. Evaluation plans aren't always a one-size-fits-all situation. You may find that evaluation plan is unique to is unique as your project. There are some projects that will have a very straightforward evaluation plan, such as um, a native language project that will increase the fluency of their participants. All other projects will have to develop an evaluation plan that best captures the impact of your project in addressing the current condition statement. We will break down the next steps needed in the next slide. To start, have the TTIP objectives handy that you drafted in the framework. The following steps will lead to an outcome tracker, which is the ANA tool for evaluation. Step one is to find the indicator, and that is what you're intending to change. And if you remember in the TTIP objective, it is the I part of your objective. Step two, decide what's the best way to measure the change based on the following considerations. The first one is the type of change. For instance, many types of knowledge increase can be measured by pre and post testing. Test participants when they enter the project in the middle if applicable and when they leave the project. The knowledge increase is a direct result of the project. This works well for language fluency projects as well as any skills upgrades, trainings, or workforce development. The next thing you should consider is your organizational capacity to conduct evaluation. Evaluations bring up preconceived ideas about what is needed, such as expensive consultants and software, but very often evaluations can be managed by staff that you already have with the appropriate tools in an Excel spreadsheet. This is important to resource, research now, acquire and to develop evaluation tools. An example of this would be a fluency scale during the planning stage so that you have a substantive evaluation plan for your application. This will be your means of measurement. Step three, evaluation involves tracking the same data points in different points in time. a and &A asks that you track the progress of your project in yearly increments, such as year one, year two, year three, and the end of the project. And then there's an additional point, which is three years past the project end, but there will be more on this on the next slide. Step four, Provide the details of the evaluation plan, what data will be collected, how often, by whom. Identify the tools that will be necessary, any assessments or skills, software, or computer. Also, it helps to include information on how the data will be stored, especially if it is sensitive. Personal information on participants. You should detail how you will keep the information confidential through any kind of encryption, as well as the confidentiality policy of your tribe or organization, if applicable. This is an example of the outcome tracker. The outcome tracker is the form that ANA suggests to use as part of your evaluation plan. ANA requests an outcome tracker form for each objective in your project. When looking at the form, you'll, you should recognize many familiar fields, such as the long-term community goal, project goal, objectives, primary outcome, and indicator. These were all identified as part of your framework. You will literally cut and paste these fields from the framework into this form. It's keeping the exact wording is very important. Um, and it is, um, you'll find that it is a requirement um, once you actually fill out your application. Going back to the steps we covered in, slide, in the last slide, step two will be the means of measurement. And this is where you'll fill it in in the form. So example, for an example, if you have the language fluency project and you'll use pre and post testing to track participants' project, then you will enter that into the means of measurement box. Now let's look at the data points. The data points are the projected targets at different points in time using the same means of measurement. The baseline is the data point before you start the project. And then you will project or um, include targets for each year after that. So it would be for year one, year two, 
end of project, and then three year post project. The outputs, we're going to wait until we cover them in the objective work plan, which will be on um, later. For more examples of completed outcome trackers, I suggest going to the PPD toolkit under resource 8.1.